prophets right here. We're going to make some reference to some other scriptures, but we're going to look at the story uh, in these seven verses tonight. We're going to read them, read all seven verses as a text this evening, and then we're going to try to break it down. Just I had prepared this and felt the Lord laid on my heart this thought and was wanting to make sure that I um, bring it out the way that he wants it brought out and came across something in my studies uh, that was... Uh, just very spot on and, and just gave a great explanation to what, what I feel like the Lord would have for us this evening. So I'm thankful for the Lord that he leads us to those places that we need to be uh, to deliver the word. So uh, I pray that the, the word will find a good place in our hearts tonight. Powerful, powerful uh, prophet and prophet Elijah. And we, we study about Elijah. And we, Elijah followed him. And he was just a man that when he laid it all down, he laid it all down. And he followed after the man of God, and his request, of course, of the man of God is, I want a double portion of whatever's, whatever it is that you've got, I want a double portion of that anointing that's on your life. He didn't say he wanted a double portion of, of Elijah. Elijah, he said he wanted a double portion of the anointing that was upon his life. He didn't uh, want to be like him, the man, per se, but he wanted to be uh, like him, that is anointed, that anointing that was upon his life. And he, he did that. And here's, here's one of those instances where God used him in a great way. Second Kings 6, verses 1 through 7. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And answered, I will go. So went with them, and they came to Jordan. They cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand and took it. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for your presence. We're thankful for your spirit this evening. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would just speak to us through the words of your your spirit through the word of God tonight. Pray in the name of God that we'll find good place in our hearts. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, just to, to open our understanding and help us to realize that that you have for us is in time, every time. And I just pray, Father God, that you would just minister and move through this place this evening in accordance to your will, your way, your purpose, and your plan. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here in our story in our text tonight, we find the sons of the prophets. Now, sometimes the wording of Scripture can can throw us off a little bit, but here the sons of the prophets are telling, saying unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. And, and what they're saying there is it's too crowded. This group of young preachers that studied under Elijah they, they had so many of them had joined his this this seminary, if you will, that he had this place of learning that he had put together. They had run out of space, and that's a good thing that they had got to that place that they were growing, and the sons of the prophets were there, and they're growing. And so they went to Elijah and they asked permission and and wanted his seal of approval and wanted him to go forth and 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 to encourage it, and so he did. And so immediately they begin to clear land. They begin to chop down trees and chop down wood. They were going to build a a new dorm. They were going to build a new building, a new facility uh, to be able to hold them so they're not on top of each other and crowded. Uh, So they got the permission, got the clear, and they're they're beginning to work. And as they're working, uh, we we see that something happens. And we want to focus in on, uh, and Scripture focuses in on, the story does, on what One of those young prophets, uh, one of those young prophets was excited about doing the work. It doesn't, we don't have, uh, 
any intel on any of the others, just this particular prophet. Uh, and he was excited about being a part of the work. Uh, the only problem was he didn't own an axe because it says his axe was borrowed. And so he borrowed an axe, and he took and he borrowed that axe uh, and took that and began to cut away at trees. And, uh, and no doubt he was attacking those trees with all fervor and all diligence, uh, giving it all that he had, excited to be a part of what was going on, uh, excited to be a part of ministry, no doubt, excited to be uh, up underneath and learning under Elijah, but also uh, excited to be doing uh, a work for the Lord and building these facilities. Uh, listen, it's one thing to be, to be excited about preaching and excited about teaching, uh, but, uh, you know, it takes a, a, a man or a woman of God that has a desire and a heart for God uh, to roll up their sleeves and do whatever needs to be done. Uh, so these young men were not looking just to be preachers only. Uh, they said if we want a dorm, we'll build a dorm. We'll do whatever it takes. Uh, they were willing to work. So here he was and he's he's at it, man. He is tearing it up uh, and he's just swinging away, uh, tear, taking down trees uh, and just working uh, and just after one powerful swing though that the handle suddenly goes like in his hands and and I had a stick I think I left it over in the side room there but he, he had it and he's swinging that and he's swinging and all of a sudden he noticed something uh, that that thing got light and the force you can imagine almost knocked him down uh, if you've ever had that happen to be swinging a hammer we used to have them how many members the old ball peen hammers my, my stepdad had a few of those, and had we've had a few hammers in our lifetime. He always had the east swing, the 22-ounce east swing, because he was a roofer, and, and it was made, and, and it was made strong. But he never let us use those. We had the wooden handle one uh, that you'd have to hit a nail, hit the hammer, hit a nail, hit the hammer. And if you didn't do that, that head would do just what this head did. Uh, it'd come flying off. And so here it was, it, it, the weight would change because that head came off. So you can imagine, you can picture that young man swinging away at a tree. And as he's swinging away at that tree, uh, the handle uh, gets light in his hand. And the force, uh, you can imagine, almost took him to the ground. Uh, and he looks up just in time to see the axe head splash into the water. You know what happened? He lost his cutting edge he lost his cutting edge and that's what I want to talk to you about tonight is the cutting edge and what to do uh, when we lose our cutting edge as we see here uh, that when he lost his cutting edge uh, he lost the power element uh, what he had there in his hand uh, was a stick but the stick was not the power element uh, what he needed was that sharp edge that goes on the end of that stick uh, I was thinking about this this week and, and we've got to be careful how we judge things uh, and we have to be careful careful of the power of a cutting edge and not to think well a man that has a machete or an axe has any more power than one that may have a steak knife so we have to understand some things about a cutting edge or one that may have a razor what's important is that you have the cutting edge not in particular the size of it or what but what it's used for for instance if I was going to shave tonight night, I wouldn't take an axe head to shave. I would use a razor. If I was going to cut my steak, I wouldn't go out there to the garage and grab the axe head and begin to chop away at that steak. I wouldn't want to eat that steak if that's what it took uh, to cut into it. But you've got a steak knife. Uh, but what all of these have, no matter how small or how big. Uh, so what I'm saying is never think, well, I'm just insignificant. I'm just small uh, when it comes to the, the things of the church or the kingdom of God. Uh, it does not matter where we're at. What's important uh, is that no matter what position or what place that we're in, uh, that we realize there's a desperate need uh, for a cutting edge. Uh, the Word of God is our cutting edge. Uh, scripture tells us in Hebrews that it's quick and powerful uh, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Uh, so that cutting edge that we need is that power source uh, that we have. It's that power uh, that keeps us going. Uh, it's that power that this young man needed. Uh, he 
could swing that stick, but it was not going to do him any good if there was not a cutting edge on that stick. Now, in that day and time, it was not like our axes. It was very easy for that to come off because it would be a stick with a rock that had been sharpened with a rope that tied it off to the end of that stick that they would swing away, and it was a sharp rock. Could you imagine falling a tree with that? But there they were. They didn't have chainsaws, but they had. he had this power element that he lost. He lost the thing, get this now, uh, when he lost that cutting edge, uh, when he saw that axe head go off uh, and hit the water, he knew immediately uh, that he had lost the thing that made him effective. He had lost the very thing that made him effective. Uh, How did it cause him not to be effective anymore? Uh, Wasn't he still a son of the prophet? Wasn't he still a young man, a strong man, uh, a good man? Uh, Yes, he was still all of those things. uh, But you can't cut down a tree uh, without an axe head. Uh, He couldn't do what he was there to do without the cutting edge. Uh, So he realized that. uh, And you know what? This can happen to any of us. It's happened to me plenty of times. It's happened to to, uh, most everybody in this room if they're honest. uh, And if it hasn't, just hold on. It can happen to you and possibly will happen at some point or another uh, that you feel like. They call it a a phenomenon in business uh, and and in sports and different things. uh, that They'll say when when a baseball player will get in the slump or a football player uh, is not putting up the stats or a coach, a winning percentage goes down or, or somebody's productivity goes down on the job and they'll make that statement they've lost their cutting edge but just because you've lost your cutting edge uh, does not mean it's forever gone Uh, just because you have come up short just because uh, you've missed it uh, whatever the case may be uh, understand something don't scoff or judge or dismiss the reality of it uh, because if it hasn't happened to you yet uh, but thank God uh, if it's not happened if you've got that uh, everything in place and everything's good said pastor uh, you're not preaching to me tonight so I'll just say amen praise God but just hold on and know that we've got to stay humble and understand something that we need to hold on to this scripture in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 wherefore that him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall this young man was no doubt feeling very good about his productivity Doesn't tell us how many trees he took down before the head came off. uh, But he was probably feeling very good about himself uh, because, man, we were moving trees. uh, We're getting this thing done. uh, We're we're on the deadline, and we're meeting the deadline, and and we're getting it, and it's happening, uh, and we're making things happen. uh, And I'm just glad to be part of what God is doing, uh, glad to be a part of this work, and he's steady at work. uh, But we understand something. uh, At any moment, at any time, we could get to that. Place. It may seem like everything is going good in your spiritual walk. It may seem like everything is going good in your daily devotional. It may seem like everything's going good within the church that God is blessing and God is touching. You may feel more on fire than you've ever been before. You may realize, man, yeah, the word of God is sharp, and I'm feeling sharp in the in the things of the Lord. I'm feeling like I can take on hell with a water gun. I'm just feeling good uh, about my spiritual walk. Uh, I'm feeling good about where I stand in God uh, but we've got to stay humble and realize uh, that there is a real enemy out there uh, that wants to do anything uh, and everything he can to distract you. Uh, Understand something, the devil will do all that he can uh, to take you out and to tear you down but it's not always the devil. It's not always the devil. Now understand that The devil will cause and try to get get us to that place that our cutting edge is dull. There's nothing like being dull spiritually. There's nothing like having that sense of feeling dull and feeling dry and feeling like, man, my, my, my cutting edge is there, but it just don't seem to be effective. So the enemy can come against you in those areas. But the reality is when we lose our cutting edge, there's some things that we need to evaluate and we need to assess because we want to be very careful that we do not lose our cutting edge. That young man didn't want to lose 
against that axe head there that day. He had work to do. Uh, None of us want to lose our cutting edge. Uh, None of us want to neglect uh, that time of sharpening that cutting edge. How do we sharpen that cutting edge? Uh, Iron sharpens iron. Uh, So the only way that we can do that uh, with iron sharpening iron is fellowship with our brothers and our sisters in the Lord. Uh, Fellowship with God in a time of prayer. Uh, I don't know about you, but before I start the day, uh, it's important for me that I go in that prayer closet uh, and I sharpen that axe head uh, because there's some trees to cut down spiritually. Uh, There's some battles to be won. There's some things to be done. uh, And we need to do a checkup and an evaluation. uh, But what happens uh, is we get busy and scripture tells us not to get weary in well doing and we've got to be oh so careful say we can get so busy in the work of the Lord this young man was studying to be one of the prophets he wanted to be like Elijah as Elijah wanted the double portion of the anointing that was on Elijah these young men looked up at Elijah and said I want to be a minister like him I want to have that and what did they see in Elijah they saw on the spiritual side not with an axe head or an axe handle but spiritually they saw a man of God that had the cutting edge a man that had a relationship with God a man who was sharp spiritually I want to be sharp spiritually and the only way that you can be sharp spiritually is to listen to the word of God when it says be sober be vigilant knowing that you have an adversary to know what the word of God says put on the whole armor of God and to understand that it's not about me but I stand in the strength of him I can't sharpen that edge but to know that it's he that sharpens that edge and to know that I must stay sharp in prayer in the word but what happens what do we do though when we sense that we're losing our cutting edge you could be out there and brother Kevin no doubt used chainsaws and axes over the years and and you just know, even with a chainsaw, we'll, we'll go with a chainsaw and not an axe. But you can take a chainsaw and it can be zipping through and, and you begin to realize that, man, this thing needs to be sharpened. And you begin to realize it's not, I'm not getting the productivity that I used to get. Or if you had that axe head and you're out there and you're, you're cutting through that wood, years ago we had some some roots, a tree that we took out in the yard and there was roots and, uh, and I'm beating and beating and beating uh, and cutting and cutting on those roots uh, and, and man, the back is hurting and everything is hurting uh, but what I found out uh, is the axe wasn't as sharp as it used to be. All that swinging in the dirt and cutting in the dirt uh, 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 began to dull that edge. So there's some things, some battles, some work that we'll do. Uh, we can't just keep working for the Lord every day uh, and, and just keep that same inch instrument going uh, and keep swinging that same axe and keep swinging that same edge uh, and think uh, that it's just going to keep on going Uh, it's going to take going into that shed sharpening that axe and going back at it uh, and doing some maintenance and doing some checkup. Uh, It wasn't a fact here that this young man's axe lost its sharpness. Uh, He lost it all together. Uh, So there's some maintaining that has to go with it. It's the same way uh, with our spiritual walk. Uh, We can't just go out and fight devils all day every day uh, and fight battles uh, and go through situations and circumstances uh, and help this one and help that one and do ministry uh, and and try to do all the things uh, that we as Christians are supposed to be doing and think that we can do that on our own accord and we can just keep swinging and this young man realized something I know one thing I can't do it with this stick I need the cutting edge as he watched it sink to the bottom have you ever been there have you ever been there when you recognize it that you what do I do now to overcome it Maybe it didn't just get dull. Maybe it was like this young man that you watched it as it flew off. You ever heard saying it flew off the handle? When you lose your cutting edge, not only the edge will fly, but you'll fly off the handle. And, and your attitude and your temperament and things will begin 
to change. So what do you do? What do you do to overcome this? What do you do when you lose your cutting edge? What do you do when you find yourself in this situation? Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you're saying, Brother Jamie, I don't know, but I sure need to know because I feel like I'm in that place and I'm standing there with just an axe handle. It once had an axe head on it. I felt like once I was sharp. Maybe it's maybe you're just saying tonight, well, Brother Jamie, it's not that the cutting edge is uh, completely off of it. I just feel dull spiritually. I, I just feel empty. I just feel void where once I used to feel on fire and felt like I could do anything for the kingdom of God. Uh, and now I'm having doubts uh, of my ability to accomplish anything. I, I used to dream big. I, I used to come expecting uh, great things. I used to believe that God would work miracles. Uh, and now I just think, well, it's always going to be this way. I, I used to believe that my God can do all things. Uh, but I used to believe that anything could be accomplished. Uh, I used to think that when we come to church uh, that the power of God's going to fall. Uh, I used to think that we could accomplish great things uh, that we could build a church here at Middleburg. Uh, but here lately uh, I just feel dull. Uh, I just feel like well uh, this is the way it's always going to be. Uh, this is just the way it is. I'll just have to deal with it. Uh, I'll just have, I've made my bed I'll just have to lie in it. Uh, this pain I'm always going to have to put up with. Uh, this circumstance uh, that neighbor uh, I'm just going to have to deal with them. That's just the way they are and nothing's going to change. Maybe that's where you are. Just feel dull. Or you say, all I got is a stick. All I got is a form of what I used to have, but I watched as it flew off the handle. And since that time, I have flown off the handle a time or two. It's gone. Now what do you do? How do you recover from losing your cutting edge, whether it's gone dull or it's gone all together. I want to give you five things tonight. Uh, five things tonight, uh, very quickly, to what we do uh, to recover when we feel like we've lost our uh, cutting edge. I preached to you Sunday morning about recover, uh, and so I just want to keep in that vein this evening on recovering your cutting edge. Uh, number one, we have to make sure, uh, to, how do you make sure to recover from uh, losing your cutting edge is to make sure you don't lose it to start with. And how do you make sure you don't lose it to start with? Uh, you practice regular self evaluation. Uh, we find this young man here that he's lost his cutting edge uh, and obviously it's because he neglected in some areas. Uh, now you can imagine that that axe head didn't just fly off the handle all at once. Kind of like that old ball peen hammer I was telling you about earlier that you'd have to swing and bump. Swing and bump. Maybe he borrowed a bad axe from somebody. Or maybe he had just been working so hard that he had wore it down and wore it out and it just needed some maintenance. It just needed some work. But here he was. It didn't just fly off all at once. It had been loosening up over time. But he was so busy swinging that he didn't even notice. Or he didn't take time to do anything about it. That's how life is. We practice regular self-evaluation to ensure, ensure that our communion with God is tight. That we make sure every day uh, that we, we may not have the, the recover, we don't have to worry about having to go into a, a recovery or a search party uh, to find our cutting edge, that axe head, uh, if we would just simply maintain it properly. Uh, if this thing, if we could look back, uh, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, so if this little brother would have took every day uh, at lunchtime, made sure, looked over his axe and made sure uh, that the rope that kept that rock tied to the end of that stick was tight uh, and just did some evaluation of it uh, and then again at the end of the work day did that and then again uh, in the morning before he went to work just evaluated that uh, there's a lot of people they don't evaluate their tools they don't look at it just take it out the toolbox start using it uh, so he had done this it does not tell us how many days that he had went through this uh, but we do that we just get up we hit the 
floor running. Uh, we just go to work. I got school. I got uh, work. I got family. I've got all of these things to do, work to be done. Uh, even as a pastor, there's ministry to be done, uh, uh, hospitals to visit, people to talk to, uh, uh, seminars to go to, studying to be done, uh, all of preparations to be made, uh, all that needs to be done in our daily life. And here we go through the day. Uh, but if we don't stop and do some self-evaluation, uh, we will get to that place of total burnout, of total dullness, or we'll find that we'll swing that hand on there to go flying off. It'll go flying off. So, first thing you need to do to make sure it don't happen to start with is practice self-evaluation. We know that the psalmist prays and he asks the Lord, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. That's important to pray that. But it's also important for you to search yourself. It's also important for you uh, to evaluate yourself. It's, also, it's important for you to uh, assess. Uh, matter of fact, people love, uh, love uh, Matthew 7 and 1 and says, You can't judge me because Scripture says, uh, Don't judge me. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Uh, and what it goes on to say there uh, is that if you would judge yourself, if you would assess yourself, if you would evaluate, evaluate yourself, then you wouldn't have to have somebody judging you. You wouldn't have to have somebody correcting you. You wouldn't have to have what you call criticism. How, how many has had that, what you felt was criticism? Somebody's trying to correct you and, and straighten you out. We, we not ever think that we need to be straightened out. But I've had to be straightened out a time or six myself. I've had to have that happen. But I didn't like it at the time, Sister Donna Kay. I didn't like it when somebody came to me and pointed out things in my life. But you know what? If I would have done some self-evaluation, Sister Gilda. If I'd have been uh, spending more time in the prayer closet uh, and been doing more of a checkup on Jamie uh, and the tools that I have and the work that I'm supposed to be doing, uh, then I wouldn't have had to worry about that. So number one is regular self-evaluation. Number two, sometimes you just got to take a break. You just got to take a break. Get you a Kit Kat bar and take a break. Now, this young man had lost his cutting edge. Then he stopped swinging. Think about that now. If he would have continued swinging, what would have he been doing? He would have been taking and banging a wood stick up against a tree. Just, you think, how, much, how many trees do you think he's going to take down like that? He would just been making a lot of noise, wasting time, losing energy, and not accomplishing anything. Do you ever feel like that that's where you're at spiritually, you're just making a lot of noise, going through the motions, wasting time, losing energy, and you're not accomplishing anything? Uh, well, if you feel that way, I can guarantee you, you've lost your cutting edge. And it's time to take a break. It was at this point uh, when his cutting edge was gone, uh, it was far beyond time to take a break. Uh, he was in that place, uh, so he stopped swinging. Uh, and don't show, he had stopped swinging it. Why did he stop swinging it? Because there was no axe head on the end of that axe handle. Duh, right? That seems like the smart thing to do uh, if you're left there with just a handle that's supposed to be an axe. Uh, so he stops swinging. Uh, so tonight, if you're at that place that you feel like, man, I'm just making a bunch of noise, I'm wasting time, uh, I'm losing energy, and I'm not accomplishing anything, uh, I'm not getting anywhere, uh, why would you keep swinging the axe handle? Why would you continue to go through the motions uh, and keep working and keep pushing yourself and keep uh, saying, i got to keep going, i got to keep moving. Uh, there's things to be accomplished. You're not going to accomplish anything, uh, Mr. Prophet, son of the prophet, uh, without an axe head. Uh, you can't cut down trees without an axe head. Uh, and you can't accomplish anything for the kingdom of God without your cutting edge. Uh, so if you felt like, uh, man, I'm dull, you felt like uh, I'm wore out, I'm wore down, uh, step back uh, and take a break uh, and realize I need to, at this point, uh, I should have took some self-assessment and I didn't take some self-assessment, uh, so I need to stop and take a break. If you sense that you've lost your cutting edge, just simply take a break. What do you do when you take a break? You don't quit. 
You don't turn around and walk away. No, that's not what taking a break means. Taking a break does not mean that you do what the devil wants you to do and say, well, there's no use anyway. I might as well go on back to where I used to be. Taking a break does not mean that. Taking time, uh, I know that we've been taught and we've heard, uh, and I've even said it, if you're, uh, if you're standing still, uh, you, you're not making any productivity. Uh, if you're not moving forward, you're going backwards. Uh, we, I understand we say all of that, uh, but at some point you've just got to rest. You've just got to pray. You've got to reconnect with God. Uh, you've got to reconnect with the Scripture. You've got to reconnect with your family. Uh, you've got to reconnect with your purpose. But most of all, uh, please stop swinging. Quit going through the motions. Uh, quit acting like you got something that you don't. Uh, quit acting like I can take this tree down. No, you can't. Uh, we cannot do it without the Word, which is our cutting edge. Uh, and if we've lost that, if we've lost the axe head, uh, if we've lost that that we so desperately need uh, to accomplish it, we can't do it on our own. Uh, if we have to realize and understand, uh, if I feel like I've got to that place, uh, that nothing's being accomplished, uh, it's time for me to lay down that axe handle uh, and slip off into a prayer closet somewhere uh, and take time to reflect uh, on what my purpose is uh, and what I'm supposed to be doing, where I went wrong, where I missed the mark. Uh, this young man was fortunate enough that he saw it when it came off and hit the water. But maybe you didn't realize that it flew off and you've just been steady swinging. You've just been going through, the, you've just been so busy You've just been going through the motions. And then you just realize, I've not accomplished anything. I've not accomplished anything. Have you, have you done that and assessed and evaluate what am I accomplishing for the kingdom of God? I'm not talking about how much productivity that we have on our job. All, all of that is important. Man don't work. Man don't eat. I get all of that. But there's some things that take utmost importance in a Christian's life. And we have to, to remember and look and think at a time that when we pray that, that all of heaven paid attention. That when we got up in the morning that the devil knew that we was going to be productive that day. Why? Because we had a cutting edge. They, they are sharp. They are sharp in the work of the Lord. When they get up, and work for the Lord, they do it with diligence, they do it with perseverance, they do it with fervor, uh, and, and I want to always be that one, as I've said many times, that when my feet hit the floor in the morning, the devil says, uh-oh, uh, he's up. Why? Because uh, we're just going to be productive for the kingdom of God. Uh, we're not going to let things get in our way. We're going to take advantage of every opportunity uh, to cut right in uh, and do what God would have us to do. Uh, it may be, may be, Brother Kevin, in the middle of a work day, uh, that you're waiting on customers uh, and God brings that hurting soul there uh, if God knows man he's got that cutting edge and the devil knows uh, that he's got that cutting edge uh, that it does not matter that he's got a quota to meet uh, to sell so many appliances this week uh, but he understands that there's something more than selling another wash machine or selling another freezer uh, there's a soul here uh, that God has dealt with me to speak to uh, so I'm going to minister to it uh, and to know in the end of that day uh, that he knows and the devil knows and God knows uh, that he took advantage but if we're not careful we'll get so focused on what we've got to do that we lose it lose our cutting edge and we lose our connection forget our purpose and we just go through life and go through the day and we accomplish nothing for the kingdom of God why? because we've lost not just our cutting edge we've lost our purpose Without the axe head, that young man had no purpose. He might as well get out of the way. Because he was not only not being productive, but he was holding up productivity if he's banging up against a tree with a piece of wood. There's another one of those young prophets that's got the axe head on there that he could take care of the tree. It could be done. So we have to understand that it's very important we just take a break, can reconnect, stop swinging, if you lost your axe head, you're not accomplishing anything. Number three, remember that you're just a steward. Remember that you're just a steward. Sister Amy, if you'll put verse 5 up there. Verse 5, 
He says, but as one was failing a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master. Why? For it was borrowed. It was not his. He had borrowed it. So we have to remember this, that we're just a steward. So this was the initial response of this budding prophet. He, was, he had lost his cutting edge, and what he had realized is, as he cried out, Alas, my master, is he, was he, what was he crying about? The loss of the axe head, because it did not belong to him. It was borrowed. Someone permitted him to use it. Now, imagine that picture. You borrow, Brother Jeff, can I borrow an axe from you? And I borrow an axe from you today, and then tomorrow I'll bring you an axe handle back. Say, sorry. I kind of lost the most important element of that. That would not work out too well for this young man. Brother Jeff would be looking at it and say, come on, preacher. Where, where's my axe head? This handle does not do me a bit of good. You would rather uh, them bring you the axe head back than the handle back. Uh, but he brings him, he comes and he brings an axe handle back. He knew he couldn't do that. Uh, so he went to the prophet. He went to the man of God. He went to Elijah. Why? Because he knew uh, it was borrowed and someone permitted him to use it. Uh, but if, he had to re- uh, if it had to be returned, uh, he would have to answer to the owner for the loss of the axe head. We have to understand spiritually it's the same way with us. Our gifts, our talents, our position, our relationships, our opportunities, they're not ours. They're not ours. They're borrowed. This life of ours is borrowed. Second or excuse me, first Corinthians chapter six, verse nineteen and twenty starts out with what you may have said, and when I said that your life is not yours, it's borrowed. What? That's how Paul starts off these verses. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you're not your own? Don't you know that? How is that? Verse 20, he says, For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Understand something. You are a manager, a steward, a trustee of that which belongs to another. Uh, We are uh, stewards uh, and we want to be good stewards of that that belongs to God. Uh, That money that you may have in your pocket tonight, it's not yours. It belongs to God. That car that you drove here tonight in, it's not yours. Uh, It belongs to God. That house that you live in, uh, that bed that you lie on at night, it's not ours. Uh, It belongs to God. We don't own anything. Uh, We're bought with a price. It all belongs to Him. Uh, Matter of fact, that breath that you just took, uh, it don't belong to you. Uh, That's God's. Uh, It all belongs to Him, and He has given it to us. Uh, We go back to Genesis, and we realize that God put it all in place, uh, but he put us here and said enjoy every bit of it just be good stewards of it he told Adam to keep the garden and till the ground take care of the things that was there and it's the same way now God has trusted it all into our hands I don't know about you but that that God has trusted me with I want to be a good steward of it this church that that I'm in tonight it's not mine I may be the pastor of this church, uh, but this church does not belong to me. Uh, I'm just the steward over the house. Uh, I'm just the manager, if you will, uh, to take care of the things of the house of God. Uh, And that's an awesome responsibility. Uh, It should never be taken lightly. Uh, And I guarantee you, I don't want to be doing it by swinging an axe handle. I want to make sure there's something on the end of that axe handle. I want to make sure when it's dealing with the finances of the church uh, that I'm sharp in doing that. Uh, When it's working around these altars, altars, that I'm sharp in doing that. Uh, When it's preparing to preach on Sunday morning, uh, that I'm sharp in doing that. Uh, Or Sunday night or Wednesday night Bible study, uh, that I'm sharp in doing that. Leading the church to the next level, uh, building and going. Uh, I want to make sure, and we all should make sure uh, that we have an awesome responsibility uh, that we are the body of Christ uh, members in particular uh, I'm just a part of the body uh, that each one of us make up that body uh, and we all have a role in the house of God uh, and it's very important that we understand something Uh, I don't say it's my church because it uh, it belongs to me but I say it's my church because I belong to it uh, and I have an awesome responsibility uh, to take care of it 
That's why these ladies show up once a month to, to clean the house of God. That's why we show up uh, on work days. And that's why we, uh, you know, when we walk through, uh, I think it's very important that any of us, if we're walking across the churchyard, heading into church, uh, you see a piece of paper on the ground, uh, you don't say, well, that's not my problem. Well, it is. Uh, this is our property. This is our uh, house, our things. Uh, not because they belong to us, but because God said, be a steward over it. Uh, and understand that there's things uh, that we can take care of. Uh, and understand that it belongs to us so when he lost that when it was gone he realized something he is going to have to answer to the true owner so understand something you keep on swinging not evaluate don't rest you can do all those things but understand one thing one day you're going to have to answer to the Lord for all that he has entrusted to you to manage one day sister Moses we're going to stand before him for all that he entrusted to us to manage. And we can begin to say, Lord, I did this in your name, and I did that in your name. Remember reading that in Scripture? Uh, they begin to stand, and they begin to, to say, Oh, well, God, I ca we cast out devils in your name, and we did this in your name. And what did he say? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Why did he say that? Because they were not good stewards of what God entrusted into their care. So this young man realized this thing is borrowed and I have been entrusted with it and now I've lost it. Listen, I don't want to stand before God one day and say, God, I know that you saved me, sanctified me, filled me with the Holy Ghost, called me out with a purpose, put me into the ministry and I was on fire for you, but I lost my cutting edge and I just kept going through the motions and hoping one day that I could stand before you uh, and you would say oh don't worry about it it'll be alright uh, everything that you've done up to that point uh, was enough to get you here uh, and I just kind of felt like uh, I'll just go I don't want to stand before him that day uh, it's very important that we stop and assess and realize that this is borrowed and this is not my own and I'm to be a good steward of it. So I have got to do something about it. We talked about self-evaluation, but also we've got to examine ourselves. What happens to you if, if you're working and, and all of a sudden you have an accident or you, you cut yourself? I know here a few years ago when we first started pastoring here, I was working at the rental store that we were starting over in Glen, and had a bunch of junk equipment. Told him not to buy a bunch of junk, but he did anyway. He, uh, he had hired me to be a, an advisor and to advise him and to give him uh, input, but he listened to nothing I said, but he gave me a paycheck every week, so that was all right with me. But we was, I was working one day, and I, th I think Amy was there that day, was working with me. I was working on a trencher, and I had a a gear that was on there that was seized up in an old trencher. It was all rusted up, and that's not my forte. But I was out there doing it because I was basically the only employee. And so I had on my mechanic hat that afternoon. And I was working with that, and it finally, when I, I came, and it somehow it broke loose, and when it did, it hit my thumbnail. And I knew something happened because it ain't supposed to feel like that. A pain went through my body. And so what did I do immediately? I dropped everything and all attention went to that thumb. I began to examine it, began to look at it, and began to understand. It's not supposed to swell up like that. It's not supposed to turn those shades of purple. That fingernail is not supposed to be broke like that. So we begin to examine it. And Elijah looked at this young man and he told, responded to this young man's cry for help with a question. Where did it fall where did it fall you know what this question required of the young man it required him to look back to retrace his steps to think about the situation so understand something when he came to the man of God and he asked for help from the man of God so many times now we come to people and are we really wanting help or we want them to do it are we really wanting them to help us figure it out my kids, they just want me to do it for them most of the time is what it seems. But we can't do that. Old saying is that you 
give a man to fish, you feed him once. You teach him to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So, so it has to be taught. So Elijah, in all of his wisdom, in all of his double portion, uh, he looks back, uh, and, and he's not been out of shape, but he just looks at it and he said, where did it fall? So what was he asking here? He was asking to man, uh, the young man to begin to examine his situation, uh, begin to look at it, begin to, uh, something was going to require it on him to retrace some things, uh, and indeed understand something, that the unexamined life is rarely effective rarely effective if we're not examining ourselves we're not going to be effective we think man I got it all together I didn't do anything wrong that thing just flew off right it, it just broke it just it just happened I don't know I, it just this car just ran out of gas well there's a gauge that has an F and an E on it that I often ignore and we say, well, it just, it just happened. It, it just happened that I'm here on the, the side of the road. That tire just blew out. Did it? Did we examine that tire to see if it was even low before we got in? No, we jumped in the car and we took off because we were running late. And so he's saying, examine your situation because an unexamined life is rarely an effective life. Take the time and the trouble to examine yourself. Uh, we have to do that. Uh, sometimes we have to be uh, our own worst critic. We've got to examine ourselves and look at ourselves and, uh, and say, listen, you're dull. You're dull. Go to the prayer closet and get your cutting edge back. There, there's just those times that we have to, to be real with ourselves. See, it's easy for a preacher to stand up and preach and tell everybody else what they've got to do, but then he has to do it himself. Paul said this. He said, I don't want to preach to others and find myself a castaway. I don't want to preach to you about being sharp when I realize that I need to work on that as well. So Elijah's telling him to do some examination. Where did you lose it? Now, if you've lost your cutting edge tonight, can you ask yourself and answer that question? Uh, where did I lose it? Where was I at? What was I doing when I felt like I lost it? Where was you at when spiritual things uh, didn't seem to be so important to you anymore? Uh, where was you at in your walk? Where was you at when church didn't seem important anymore? Where the Word of God didn't seem important anymore? Praying didn't seem any important anymore? Uh, we have to understand uh, and begin to evaluate and assess where was you at? Where was you at uh, when you lost it? Uh, when did you lose it? Uh, what should you do now? Uh, how can you retrieve it? Uh, there's just something, uh, a saying that says don't cry over spilt milk. Uh, you ever tried to put that milk back in the cup? You can't do it. You can't do anything uh, about what you lost or what has failed or what went wrong. Uh, you can't go back and, uh, and, and fix that problem uh, and stop it from happening. What happened, happened. Uh, but what you can do uh, is say, what do I do now? And I am so glad that we have access by one spirit into the Holy of Holies. Uh, and I have a heavenly father. Uh, this young man had a man of God that he could go to. Uh, and, and I want you to know that tonight, Middleburg. you got a pastor uh, that you can come to. Uh, and you can just be honest and say, Pastor, uh, I've lost my cutting edge. Uh, and you know what? It wasn't a surprise to Elijah. He saw the empty stick. Uh, and it's no surprise to a man of God. Uh, he knows before you even tell him, uh, listen, I've lost my strength spiritual edge uh, and I need to get it back. There's nothing that excites a pastor more uh, than somebody not to say I've lost my cutting edge uh, but to admit I uh, lost it uh, and I need to get it back. I can pray with somebody like that. Uh, I can work with somebody like that. Uh, it's the one that's still beating up against a tree with a stick uh, that I can't do nothing with uh, because they don't want to admit they lost it. Oh I got it. Uh, I still got it. I can still handle it. I can still do it. Uh, no you can't. You're not accomplishing anything. Fess up and understand you're missing something. You're missing the most important element. And when you can evaluate that, say, I know I lost it. I know where I lost it. Then we can do something about it. Elijah said, you tell, show me where it's at. We can do something about it. Now we can understand something that when he came to Elijah, he did not think, that he would possibly work a miracle. I don't know what he was thinking Elijah would do, but he went to him anyway. 
And he asked him, he began to, to answer. And then the story ends with a miracle. Elijah takes and he throws a stick into the water. And the axe head began to float. Yeah, the iron swam. Have you ever seen iron float? No, because that's a miracle. That's a miracle. It, it came up and it began to swim. God sovereignty intervened in behalf. For what purpose? To restore what was lost. God is still in that same business. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still in the business of restoring and recovering what was lost. He can do that for you tonight, too. When you find that you've lost your cutting edge and you just come and you don't go through the motions, don't try to play games and not try, try to act like you're being productive and try to hide up in the midst of some people that's being productive and hoping that you'll just blend in, but just step out. Let me see if I can find it over here. Hang on. Just step out with your empty axe handle with no cutting edge on it and just say, Alas, Master, it's gone. Not swinging, not going through all the drama and the motions of playing church or acting like you can accomplish something. No, just stop. Say, God, I've lost it. I've lost my cutting edge, and I know how desperately I need it. And we serve a God of grace and mercy that has placed in the ministry men of God and women of God who's going to have grace and mercy. If you ever go to a pastor or a preacher and you tell them, Pastor, I've lost it. I've lost my cutting edge. And he looks back at you and said, I knew you would lose it. You no good for nothing. Find you another church. Find you another pastor. Find you somebody else to turn to and look to for spiritual guidance because that's not the one. Because God's going to have men like Elijah and says, okay, son, where did you lose it? Let's assess this. Let's evaluate it. Let's look back. I want, to, I want to be that pastor. I want to be that man of God like Elijah to say, it's all right. God's bigger than that. Yeah, some things went wrong, and, and let's look. Let's, let's be honest. What could you have done here? You could have did some more self-evaluating, couldn't you? And, and that's important. Don't, don't think that someone's being critical of you when they say, let's look back and make sure this don't happen again. <laughs> no, I'm trying to teach him how to drive and about killed me a couple times. We're going down our road, and we tell him to turn into the parking lot of Russell Baptist, and he goes up on two wheels, and new pastor just got there that week, and his brand-new Silverado pickup truck's there, and I'm like, man, we're fixing to T-bone that truck. So I'm grabbing the steering wheel and telling him hit the brake, and he finally gets to stop and put it in park. And I look at him, I say, well, what happened there? What do you mean what happened there? I came in on two wheels, Dad. I don't know what happened couple days later we're pull, pulling into the house and up we've got the concrete or the brick mailbox and he gets real close to the mailbox about takes out my side mirror in the mailbox and I said what happened there and he finally said dad why do you keep asking me what happened there I don't know what happened there I said I'm asking you that so you don't make that mistake again I want to keep my mirror I'm not too fond of going up on two wheels and about taking out the church and the pastor's truck. So we need to make sure that we look and see, hey, maybe I need to slow down a little bit before I turn, or maybe I need to get a little bit further away from that curve. So when somebody is what we think is criticism that looks, and you come to them and they say, listen, God can make it better. God can give it back. But what are we going to do to guard it this time? What are you going to do once you get that axe head back on there? Are you just going to go swinging again and do the same thing over and come cry, I lost, Master. I lost. I lost it again. 
No, the, God worked a miracle on his behalf, and Elijah threw that stick, and that that he did there, he'll do for you too. In closing tonight, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. These are some steps that we can go through when we feel like we've lost our cutting edge or we're losing our cutting edge. But in 1 Thessalonians 5.21, it's simple. It says, prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. To know I'm glad to have it. I don't have it on here, but I've got an axe head on my stick. I'm glad to have a cutting edge. So I'm going to make sure that I prove all things and I hold fast to that which is good. God has given me this. He's put this treasure in earth and vessels. He's given us this cutting edge. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to maintain it. I'm going to make sure that I do whatever I have to do to keep it sharp, keep it tight, keep everything right. Because one day I've got to give it back to the owner. One day I've got to stand before the owner and say, thank you for giving me that cutting edge to accomplish the task that I had to accomplish. I could not have done it without it. And now it's my time to give it back to you. This life that we have, that's exactly what it is. That one day, we're going to give it back to Him. These ladies were singing Sunday. Lord, I give myself away so that you can use me. I don't want, to, I don't want any of you to lose your cutting edge. So that's important that we do point one. But if for some reason you do or you have, there is a way of recovery. There is a way of restoration. God will work a miracle. But what are you going to do when he works that miracle? What are you going to do when that axe head floats and you put it back on there? That young man probably did some things differently when he went back to work. And it's important that we begin to evaluate and assess. What do you do when you've lost your cutting edge? Will you stand with me tonight? I don't, I don't know if this applies to anyone here for the right now. But I know that I've had to put these things to work in my life before, and I'm sure I'm going to have to do them again. And maybe tonight you say, Brother Jamie, I'm sharp. I, I am sharper than I've ever been spiritually. Everything is good. I, I, I pray tonight, if that's the case, that you take this message and you put it in your pocket and you realize and understand, I need to make sure that I heed to that, that I make sure if you got your cutting edge, do everything that you can to maintain and keep it. But if you're here tonight and that edge is dull or you've lost it, understand something this evening. There are some steps to go to to get it back. Ultimately, crying out to God. Ultimately, praying for a miracle. But you can't get a miracle if you don't ask for it. Sister Mary opened up her Bible before they sung Sunday morning and quoted, read, Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask, and you shall find. Seek, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh, receiveth. So we have to, in order to ask, that means we have to admit something that I'm supposed to have, I don't have. And that's hard to do sometimes. You think everybody thinks I have it, but I don't have it. If they've got discernment, they don't think that you have it. They know that you don't. They're just waiting for you to admit, I've lost it, and I need help. And help is on the way. Help is there. The help is found around these altars with people that love you, that will pray with you and pray for you because we all want to make sure that we have our cutting edge because we're in this together. If, you don't have, if you're cutting edge, that means more trees that I have to cut down is what one of those others are thinking. We work together. Father, we love you tonight. And we thank you, Lord, that you give us everything that we need to have a cutting edge spiritually. Lord God, that we can be sharp and that we can be all about your business, Lord, working for you and being faithful. And it's just up to us to maintain that that you've given us and, and to keep a guard on it, and be sober, be vigilant, to know that we have an adversary that's wanting to do anything he can to distract us. And if he cannot dull our edge, he's going to do what he can to make us forget to maintain that edge. 
He's going to do whatever he can to keep us out of a prayer closet and keep us out of the tool shed where we get that iron sharpened. He's going to do whatever he can to do that. But Father God, we've got to fight with everything that we have within us. Focus more so than ever before. Because if we ever needed our cutting edge before, we sure do need it now. And I pray, Father God, that you'd help us each one tonight just to assess our own lives, to examine ourselves around these altars tonight and say, is everything good with my cutting edge? Is it sharp? Is it tight? Is everything in order? Is everything in place? Do I have communication with the Father? Because oh, I know one day I'm going to have to return back to Him, that that He has put in my care, and I want to make sure that I give it back better than what it was brought to me. And I just pray, God, that you would just touch us tonight as we evaluate ourselves around these altars tonight. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you join me around the altars this evening? Let's just take and evaluate our work tools if we can tonight, our cutting edge. Make sure everything is what it needs to be in our spiritual life.